So a few weeks ago, Meta released a new API called the Depth API, and it's generating quite a bit of buzz. The YouTuber Dilmer has already done a video on getting started with the SDK and the sample provided by Meta. But I wanted to spend a little bit more time tonight kind of digging into why we need the API in the first place and how it actually works under the covers. So why do we even need a depth API? Well, in traditional gaming, oftentimes we don't. We can actually get away without a depth API at all. In fact, um, if you have a scene set up like this where you've got a camera and then you've got some virtual objects, it's pretty easy for a game engine like Unity to figure out how to render these things so that we get the effect that we want. You can just imagine a line from the camera through the scene, uh, front to back, that tells us the, the game engine which objects are in front of other objects. And then simply if we render from the back to the front, we get the right information. So as long as, in this case, the guitar is rendered before the magnifying glass, then we get this nice glass effect of um, seeing the guitar through the magnifying glass. But in mixed reality applications, we have one additional complication, and that's the pass-through system. So remember, you're in the headset, you've got a camera looking out into the world, and we need to incorporate that camera video into the world. The way that we normally do that is through a pass-through layer. And so basically what happens is there are frames being grabbed from the video camera, and then it's being projected or drawn underneath all of the rest of the content and the scene. And again, as long as you have everything lined up correctly, then you get the same scene that we had before. We get the accurate depth information, and you can even see the background kind of bleeding through the glass, giving a nice realistic effect here. But now imagine for a moment that the user brings up their hand and the hand is closer to the camera than the guitar or the magnifying glass. Now we have a problem because the hand is in that video layer being drawn on this billboard, if you will, in the background. How do we get that hand to show up in front of the guitar or in front of the magnifying glass? And that is what the Depth API gives us. All right, so this is the uh, depth sample app that uh, running on my headset, but I've modified it to include this depth visualizer. And on the top, you're seeing the depth that's being generated by the, the new SDK that was released. Uh, so this is the depth map of the room. And I'll try to kind of get over here so you can see the depth being generated. And then on the bottom is the depth map generated by Unity from the virtual scene. And you can see how the two kind of correspond with each other. So we have the th three different modes uh, for the, the textures that they showed, the no occlusion at all, hard occlusion, and soft occlusion. And what I wanna show is here's the hand. Right, so here's the depth map again from the room, but the hands are close. And so if I move the hand over either of these two guitars, then you can see that the depth map from the room has a closer value to the camera uh, than the depth map from Unity. So it takes these pixels from the, the pass-through camera and allows them to be drawn and uh, basically, this is like a cookie cutter. It's cutting the pixels out of the Unity render so that we can see the pass-through camera in the back. Now, this one that's set to no occlusion at all, well, you can see that when I move my hand over this one, it doesn't cut the pixels. The pixels from the Unity game object are still drawn, meaning they're drawn on top. So this really shows that the, uh, the camera feed from the pass-through camera is rendering in the back. And the trick that we have here with this latest SDK is really cutting pixels out based on the depth information to show that background through. So you can even see as my hand comes through the guitar, um, my, my hand is always in the top map there. But as it goes through the guitar, then I'm showing more of the guitar pixels and less of the pass-through camera pixels. 
So let's take a look at how this works in the SDK. In pretty much every meta sample that uses the pass-through display, you can see how it's configured under the OVR camera rig. So if we look at OVR camera rig and we scroll down to the pass-through, you'll see we've got a pass-through layer. And notice that the compositing is set to underlay by default. So this is what I was talking about with the video being projected on a plane in the background. Uh, there is an overlay placement, and I believe the depth SDK accounts for this as well, uh, but I haven't tried changing, uh, changing that around. And of course, when we are using pass-through, then we can set pass-through support to required um, or enabled. And then as you've seen in many other projects, there's a script to turn it on and off. What's different in this scene or what's new in this scene is this object called the environment depth occlusion. And this has two scripts on it now. The controller, which allows us to set what type of occlusion, whether we want hard, soft uh, occlusions or no occlusions at all. And, this, and then this environment depth texture provider. And this is where the magic happens. So if we open the project and uh, take a look at this code, there's a couple things I want to point out here. There is a string called the depth texture property name, and this is set to in underscore environment depth texture. This is the name of a uh, texture slot or a sample 2D, if you're familiar with writing shaders, that is filled in by the Unity SDK, the depth SDK. This may look somewhat familiar because Unity has its own built-in shader property called underscore camera depth texture, which gives you the depth map of the Unity camera if it's rendering depth in the scene. So Meta's kind of followed the same naming conventions here and uh, given us a global shader variable that we can use to get the depth map from the physical world that the application is running in. Uh, there's a helper here where we get the, the shader property. This is a unique ID. And then down here on line 84, you see what happens is uh, we're going into the XR display. We're getting a render texture um, from the XR system here with that specific ID. And then we're calling shader.setGlobalTexture to fill that value in um, from the XR display. So once that's set, then any shader in the system has access to the environmental depth. And of course, um, Unity provides us with the camera depth as well. So how did I set up that uh, depth visualizer that you saw on the headset? Let's take a look at that. I'm gonna go into my sample here. And I have basically two raw image objects, one called the physical depth image and one called the virtual depth image. And those are both pointing at uh, materials. And then on the root of this object, I have a helper script called render depth map that takes reference to these different uh, raw image controls here and fills them in. So in that code, we just have some inspector slots for those various image controls. And then on every Unity update, we call try show textures. And um, this is actually really simple to do. So we already know the, um, the global shader that Unity provides us for the camera depth texture. So we can get that material on each frame here with shader.getGlobalTexture. That gives us the Unity camera map. And then I can go ahead and call shader.getGlobalTexture with the depth texture ID, which we got from the Unity SDK. Okay, so once we have those two textures, very easy. We go in and we set the texture property on each of those raw image objects, assuming that we got both textures. If for some reason we failed to get either one of those textures, then I hide those image controls and I just um, show a text field that says that there was a problem getting the environmental uh, depth map. So finally, I wanted to talk about the materials that are provided with the SDK and that are used on each of these guitar objects. So if we look at the guitar no occlusion, that's just a standard Unity game object with the standard mesh renderer here. Uh, I should say standard material. 
But if we look at guitar hard occlusion and soft occlusion, they use a shared material called guitar occluded. And then they have a, an extra script on them called the occlusion controller. And that effectively changes for this material instance, whether it's rendering with hard occlusions or with soft occlusions. Now in the uh, sample application that ships on their GitHub, there are a number of materials um, that we can use out of the box. Here's the guitar one we were just looking at, but there are a couple other ones as well. Here's one for the mug and the sample scene, the other sample scene. There's ones for particles. But there's one main shader that runs all of this, and it is this shader right here called Depth Unlit. And I wanted to just dive in for a moment and take a look at how this works. Um, this is a standard vertex shader here uh, with a fragment. And the most important line is this line right here, this function that comes from Meta's depth SDK, and it's called Calculate Environment Depth Occlusion. Basically, you have the UV coordinate of um, where you're at within the fragment, and then you're calculating, this, this helper calculates how occluded the, uh, the texture is. So one means it's not occluded at all, zero means it's fully occluded, and then of course, somewhere in between. Now this is if only if soft occlusions are enabled. And so this finally explains to us um, what the difference is between a hard and soft occlusion and really kind of why there's more of a performance penalty. If it is only hard occlusions, then you're going to either have zero or one. It's going to be a hard edge. It's either going to be that the pixel is drawn uh, transparent, so it's a cutout, and you're going to see the, uh, the video feed from the physical world coming through, or it's going to be uh, opaque and it's going to completely block the thing in the, in the back. If it's anywhere in between, then we have to do a blend operation. And so that's how we get this kind of soft edges um, on the, uh, around the, the blend of the object. But obviously, this takes more time to blend. So we take the final uh, color that's calculated for the vertex itself, multiply it by the occlusion value, and um, that's what actually gets drawn on the screen. So again, you can use this shader if you want to. You can set up multiple different materials, obviously. But if you are wanting to write your own shader from scratch um, or modify an existing shader, then you'll want to take a look at this depth unlit shader and come down to the fragment function here. And you're basically going to want to borrow this function to do uh, occlusion depth testing um, in your fragment shader. So that's pretty much all I wanted to show for the depth SDK. I think it's an awesome new feature and it really helps um, holograms or virtual objects really feel like they fit more in the physical environment. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them below in the comments or reach out to me and chat with me on LinkedIn. Thanks for watching.